Praise God, everybody, and welcome to today's broadcast. I'm Apostle Craig Banks, and I'm so glad that you have joined us. We are so excited about all that God is doing with the body of Christ throughout um, the world, really. Uh, we've had an opportunity to talk with men and women from several countries, and God is doing marvelous things all around the globe. I want to encourage you. Let's pray. Remember to pray for all of those who are dealing with the COVID situation, their families uh, in every country, every nation on the planet. Some are having uh, serious issues with this, and let's remember them. And uh, it's just the, the time that we're in. But it's a glorious opportunity for the Lord's glory and his majesty to be seen. Let's uh, make sure our hearts or remain pure before the Lord so that we continue to walk in the love walk and do the things that bring glory and honor to the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. Listen, we want to uh, continue in the vein of sharing uh, the Word of God with you from the subject matter uh, pertaining to the open heaven. Now, we shared with you about the open heaven, but today I want to share with you uh, what we're calling the power of of the open heaven. Can you say that? The power of the open heaven. And with that, uh, let's let's go over to the gospel of, of John chapter 1 and verse 51. This is uh, when the Lord Jesus was gathering his 12 disciples together. He was calling all of them and meeting them, and they began to follow him. And this is the account where uh, Nathaniel came into the picture. And he said, talking about the Lord Jesus, he said to him, Nathaniel, most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And the Lord spoke to him about uh, that he and as well as the others were going to get a chance to experience. They were going to see the heavens open. It's a marvelous thing when uh, we begin to experience the, the open heaven or the heavens open over our life because everything starts to work. When I say everything starts to work, everything is working. And the reason it is, is because heaven has kissed the earth where you are. And that is an amazing thing. We're going to get into that <clears throat> uh, during uh, these uh, sessions uh, in sharing the word of God. Now, the Lord spoke this uh, to, um, to, to Nathaniel, but just prior to that, he had said that, uh, he said, wow, he said, you know, I'm kind of paraphrasing. He says, here is an Israelite in whom there is no guile. There's no deceit, no cunning, no, uh, no bamboozling. This guy is, he's straight. And Nathaniel looked at him, he said, uh, you must be, he said, how do you know who I am? And he said, I saw you when you were sitting under the tree before uh, your, your brothers called you. And he said, well, you must be the son of God. And he said, because I said that to you. And then he said this in verse 51, uh, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. So when the heavens are open, there's a lot of angelic activity going on uh, in and around your life. And that doesn't mean that you're better than anybody else or less than. It just simply means that your life is lined up with the will of God, with the word of God. And you are doing the things that the spirit of God has called for you to do. Over in Genesis chapter 28, uh, we shared with you how that this uh, this was the account when Jacob was going to Haran to to get a wife. He was going to his his mother's people to uh, get someone to marry. Uh, from there and on the way he's traveling alone and the sun began to go down and he came to a certain place and the Bible lets us know that that certain place was actually a place where Abraham his grandfather had built an altar to God Abraham loved God so much that he built an altar uh, he could not wait to spend time with the most high God he had he had encountered him and he fell in love with him and whatever he told him to do and instructed him to do hard or easy or questionable he did it and he did it with tremendous passion so Jacob came to this place and the Bible says he took a stone from that place it means a special place uh, it was a place of consecration 
or consecrated place and this altar had been built to God by his grandfather. So he took one of the stones and he laid his head on it and he dreamed a dream. And in the dream, he saw a ladder going up from the earth to heaven and angels were descending, were ascending and descending upon it. So angelic activity was going on. And later, Jacob said, when he woke up, he said, this is none other than the house of God. This is the front door. This is the sidewalk. This is the front gate to God's house. And I didn't know it. And he had had this divine encounter uh, through a dream with the Lord of glory. And he got to see who he is. And he is uh, Adonai. He is the owner, the master, the Lord. He owns everything. And he allowed Jacob to get a, a, a glimpse of him. And he introduced himself. He says, I'm the God of your grandfather and your father. And this ground that you're laying on, the land that you're laying on, I'm going to give it to you and your descendants. Now, he's not married, don't have any children, but he begins to talk to him about his future. When the heavens are open over your life, the Spirit of God will begin to reveal things to you about your future. Not every little point, but he'll begin to reveal things to keep you going in the direction that you need to go. So somebody might say, I asked a question, um, the, um, well, what is the open heaven? Well, the open heaven has everything to do with the blessing of the Lord resting upon your life and operating in your life. And it's the sign of supernatural activity going on in and around your life. And it's when the power of the world to come, you get that? The power of the world to come, it is now present in your life. And it begins to impact and transform the very environment around your life. Why? Because first of all, you and I must understand that the, the assignment of God for your life is that you understand that he has made you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are right. You are in right standing with him when you receive Christ Jesus. You didn't do it. You didn't earn it. Christ gave it to us. It is a gift from God. When we receive Christ Jesus, we received uh, the power of his resurrection, his redemptive work. And it makes you and me, you and us, all of us right with God. It's a legal term. So before the courts of heaven, we're in right standing with God. And because of that right standing, we've been called to live under the open heaven. The open heaven is, is, uh, is a snapshot, or I put it this way, uh, the Garden of Eden was like a, a, a snapshot where we saw Adam and Eve functioning in that place. It was a place where the heavens were open where they were. Uh, you couldn't tell if it was heaven or earth because they both kissed heaven kissed that place and it was where the presence of God was very strong keep in mind it is all about the presence of God and so when we understand the open heaven then we will begin to uh, uh, function in that and, and our functioning is great faith remember the, the centurion he told the Lord he said, uh, he asked him to come and heal his servant who was sick. And he said, okay, I'll come to your house. And he said, whoa, you don't need to do that. Uh, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. Just speak the word only and my servant will be healed because I'm a man under authority. I understand authority and I recognize that you have the highest authority. All you have to do is speak the word. I'm over 100 men and when I speak to any of them and tell them to come, they come. If I say go, they go. I understand this. And the Lord marveled and he said, now I haven't seen such great faith, not even among the people who are in covenant with the most high God, Israel. And so uh, when we walk under the open heaven and, and experience the power of it, we will begin to live and function in great faith. And then we will move into this place where we, we experience on a continuous basis God's measureless overflow in our life. And this is why we're, we're sharing these things with you to encourage you, to build you up. And, and, and let me throw this in. The Spirit of God spoke to me uh, some time back, a uh, few months back. And he said, tell my people to get low and to stay low, get low and stay low. And so I'm telling you that get low in humility, not not self, not debasing yourself and say I'm unworthy. Not that's not humility. Humility is lining up with the word of God. But get low. 
It is, it is our dependence on the Spirit of God that's going to get us through all troubled times, all challenging times. And it's, gonna, it's, the, it's our dependence on Him and being led by Him that's going to get us through the doors that He has opened for us. He doesn't always leave them open. He'll open the door and then that door will shut. And we got to be at that spot when He opens the door so we can pass through before it shuts on us. Amen. But there are some exciting things going on, some exciting times coming for the people of God. But we've got to be uh, positioned and in the uh, proper alignment. Our lives have to be uh, with the Spirit of God and with heaven so that we can experience the heavens open over our life. I'm telling you, uh, maybe you can tell a little bit. It's so much to this, and I'm excited about it because I've been seeing this very thing, the heavens open over our life, Pastor Cheryl and I over our children, over our family, over uh, the members of Canaan. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a glorious thing. I'm talking about things that should not have uh, been happening for people. It's been happening. Favors that are, that are on the ridiculous level. That's the open heaven. Why? Because the angelic activity uh, is going on. We don't order them around. We just stand on the word, decree the word of God, believe what he says. And the Lord ha is orchestrating all of this. And so the purpose of the open heaven is 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 that, first of all, to make God's covenant promises a reality. God doesn't want you, me or anybody in the body of Christ living our life knowing that we have promises, but never accessing those things. God wants them to be a reality in your life. This is not a, 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 a comic book. This is, this is not something that we, we spend our time a hoping and a praying and wishing that things would happen. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you were born, what side of the track you were on, as, as we, we tend to say from time to time. It doesn't matter what nation you're in. The Word of God works. And if you would believe God and stand on the word and trust him and walk with him, not trying to raid his pockets, but fall in love with him like you did when you first got saved, fall in love with him and follow him. Our position is to be right on the heels of the Holy Spirit. He leads us. The Bible says that many as are led by the spirit of God. These are the sons of God. Those that are on his heel in hot pursuit of him, not for what they can get, but because you're madly in love with him, all kind of marvelous things began to happen and one of those is that the promises of God began to manifest in your life amen that's what he has called us to do he's called us to live that way another purpose for the open heaven is that we might know that the Lord is with us and because of that we live our lives in reverential fear yeah he's with us when the Lord is with you you win you might want to write that down somewhere, right in the palm of your hand, like you used to do when you cheated on your test before you got saved. Write it down. When the Lord is with me, I win. You want the presence of the Lord. M Moses, uh, when he was uh, talking to the Lord in, in, in the wilderness, he was up on the mountain with the, uh, fellowshipping with the Lord, and he said, show me your glory. And he said, Mo, I can't, you know, no man can see my face and live. I got work for you to do. But I tell you what I'll do. I need you here, so I'll I will cover you with my hand. I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock, and I'm gonna cover you with my hand. Then I'm gonna pass by, and I'll remove my hand, and I'll let you see my backside. That backside actually means the afterglow. I'll let you see the afterglow of my glory. My God, and 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 Moses said, he said, man. I just saw the goodness of the Lord. So the afterglow is his goodness. If the afterglow is his backside and it's his goodness, what is the front side like? Well, Christ came and showed us what the, quote, front side of God looks like. And it is absolutely amazing. The power of the world to come is now yours. It's available to you. And that means the heavens are open over your life. When the heavens are open, the devil has to get to stepping. When the heavens are open over your life, sickness and disease has to get up and leave. When the heavens are open over your life, poverty begins to fade away. When the heavens are open, open over your life, uh, ignorance began to dart out the door, dive out the window, climb up the chimney and leave your property. 
because revelation knowledge, the knowledge of, of, of the light of God, his glory in the face of Jesus Christ began to flood your being and you start knowing. When you know, like they said in G.I. with G.I. Joe, the, the action figure, knowing is half the battle. When you know, the enemy can't snow you. The enemy can't, can't steal from you. Why? Because now you're functioning under the open heaven and the light of his glory is flooding your life. You begin to change the environment that you're in. My God, that's the way he wants us to live. That's what he's called us to. And that's the power of the open heaven. Everything starts getting in alignment. Everything starts working for you. And you are not to make apologies for it. Yeah, I said it. Don't make apologies for the heavens being open over your life. If you pursue the Lord, you start tugging on his heartstrings, you get his attention. You will get his attention. And when you get his attention, you start uh, discovering that the promises of God, they really are yes and amen. Now, you're going to learn to exercise patience and, and, and uh, patient endurance and long suffering and things like that. But the promises will manifest in your life and your children's life. Let me say this. Some of you, you've been struggling with your children. You've been struggling uh, with them. Uh, they've been bound up in habits and different things like that and going down a path that you know they shouldn't be going in. And even they know uh, several uh, of that I'm talking to now, your children, they're in a backslidden state. They were brought up in the things of God. And you've been beating yourself up saying that I must have been a bad parent. Let me stop you right here. I don't care what type of baits the enemy has laid out before them and led them down these paths and they have given into their flesh. Your prayers work. You just need the presence of God uh, over your life and over their life. Begin to decree what the word of God says and call them back in. God says, train them up in the way that they should go. And when they're older, they will not depart from it. You did what you're supposed to do. They got the word and the word of God is still working on them. God knows how to nudge them and turn them in the direction that they need to go. And that's what he's doing. And I join my faith with you and I break the power of that bondage over their life. And I command them to be set free and the scales to come off of their eyes and the dullness of hearing to leave them. And they turn around making a bowed face because the light of God's glory is shining upon them. And they begin to cry out to him. Dry up your tears and start praising God and thanking him and fall on your face and worship him as his presence begins to flood where you are. And I'm telling you, you'll see the heavens open over your life and what you've been crying about, what you've been praying about, problems you've been struggling with. Those things will go out the window and you'll have a new problem. Amen. Because God is changing the whole thing. The whole equation, the whole problem has been changed. You're working on something different now. You're using your faith for something else. Praise God. That one concerning your children is over with. Say that with me. It's over with. Hallelujah. So the open heaven, the purpose of it is so that we can know that the Lord is with us. The Lord, his name is Adonai. He owns us. He owns everything. And he has the right to use us the way he wants to because he is the Lord. He is the Lord. When we understand that he's the Lord, we, we get an understanding like Jacob did when he said, I am the Lord God. I'm the owner. I'm the one that that interrupted your grandfather's life. I'm the one that caused your father to be here and your father uh, gave birth to you. I'm the one that started all of this. I'm the one that gave them promises. I'm the one that 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 uh, that caused supernatural things to happen. I'm the one that prospered your father, uh, your grandfather. I'm the one who who caused uh, him to roll like a king and other kings had to back up off of him and had to bow down to him. He defeated kings. I'm the one that did that. I am Adonai. I'm the Lord. I'm the one in charge. When Jacob got that revelation because of the open heaven, then his life began to line up and he began to experience supernatural things. He even made a promise to the Lord. He said, if you will be with me 
if you will be with me and keep me in the way that I'm going, then everything you bless me with, I will honor you with the tithe of all of it. He did that. You can't honor God and he not turn around and honor you. Amen. And that's the power of the open heaven. Because the Lord opened the heavens over his life, he caused even adverse situations like his, his uncle changing his wages 10 times. God caused all of that to turn and work in his favor. That's the power of the open heaven. Why? Because the Lord is with you. When he's with you, then you don't live any kind of way. You don't, you don't, you don't entertain crazy thoughts. You put your thoughts on things that are above where Christ is. You begin to focus on his, his mission. You focus on his assignment for you. And that's why you need the power of, of the open heaven so that you can fulfill your purpose and your destiny. God didn't give everybody the same assignment, but what he gave you, you need to investigate it. You need to dig into it. You need to fast and pray and seek his face to find out exactly what, what it is he's called you to do and then sink yourself into that. Amen. That's what you're here for. And when you do it, then uh, if he has more for you, then praise God. If he doesn't, then praise God. If it lasts uh, for 40, 50 years, praise God. If it lasts for three years, praise God. You've got to be totally committed to it, but you must have the heavens open over your life so that you can fulfill it. Amen. Amen. Somebody better come and get me because I feel like I'm about to explode here. Praise the Lord. And as we discover that he is with us, then uh, we begin to walk in the reverential fear of the Lord. You don't want to you don't want to be disrespectful to the Lord. You don't want to be dishonorable to the Lord. And when we walk in reverential fear, it causes us to begin to monitor our attitude. It causes us to watch our words. Uh, as you begin to walk and function under this open heaven, you won't run around flapping your gum all the time, trying to get people to understand that you got something to say. You only say what he tells you to say and when he tells you to say it. You may know things, but he'll tell you to hold it. And he doesn't have to always speak to you. As you walk with him, there will be times that he will clear his throat. There will be times that he will kind of nudge you or he will grunt. And it's kind of like uh, our parents used to do. Uh, when I was growing up, we'd be at church and my mother, she would be in the choir. And uh, she was sitting where she could look directly at, at all of us. And I was always playing. I'd take part of my Sunday school money, uh, the offering that I was supposed to put in, in the Sunday school or in church. I'd always peel off a little bit of it and go buy some candy. And I'd be sitting there eating and making noise and playing and picking at everybody else. And she would be sitting there. And when I would look up at her and make eye contact, she would do this. And and I would go. Why? Because that little gesture meant I'm going to take your head off when you get home. <laughs> and I would croak because uh, I knew what that meant. Sometimes we'd be sitting there and she wouldn't be in the choir. And she'd, she'd go like, <clears throat> just gently clear her throat, which meant if you don't stop, you're going to wish you had. That's how the Spirit of God is. He'll clear his throat. He'll nudge you. He'll look at you. He'll give you a glance that you know. He saw you and so that you will shut down and do what you need to do. Amen. Amen. And another reason, another purpose for the open heaven is that you and I might have a face to face encounter with the Lord. Uh, we, we see him face to face like Jacob did. Uh, it might be in a dream. You, he reveals his word to you. Uh, but we'll have this encounter and that will be the, the, the point in your life where everything changed. Everybody needs to have an encounter with the Lord. Apostle Paul uh, had his encounter uh, on the way to Damascus. He and his group that he was with, they were going around uh, arresting people, dragging them out of the houses and throwing them in jail. I mean, they were brutal. 
and some people were being stoned because they had embraced this new way. And on the way to Damascus with papers in their hands, legal documents to do what they were doing, the Lord intervened and knocked him off of his Cadillac camel. That's what I call it. Knocked him off. He didn't just stop and say, hey, Paul, he knocked him off. And the way I envision it is that he knocked him down, slammed him to the ground and put his foot in his chest and said, why are you picking on me? Don't you know it's hard to kick against the prick? You got, you're not going to get anywhere picking on me. And Paul was shook up. And everybody with him, they heard what was going on and saw him down and they saw this brilliant light and they were messed up. And Paul said, who are you, Lord? Because all you got to do is give a name behind Lord and I'm yours. And he says, I'm Jesus. I'm the one that you're picking on. I'm the one that you're harassing. And from that day forward, Paul went about preaching Jesus is Lord. Why? Because he had a divine face-to-face life-changing encounter with him. That's the purpose of the open heaven. Paul said later in, in, in his testimony to some leaders that the Lord, when he encountered him, he said a light surrounded them and it was brighter uh, than multiple suns shining in their full strength at noonday. That's how brilliant this light was. That was the open heaven. He had, heaven had showed up in the spot that they were in and everything uh, started working. It was working for Paul. He just didn't understand the workings of it. And that working caused his life to shift and line up where he began to serve the purposes of the kingdom of God. Amen. He thought he was, but he was just being religious. He was good at being what he was, but God knew the plan that he had for his life, and he knows the plan that he has for you. And I'm telling you, brothers, sisters, whoever you are, wherever you are, you are supposed to be living and experiencing the power of the open heaven. Amen. Because the purpose also for the open heaven is to experience the manifestation of the power of his kingdom. That's the power of the world to come. It's waiting on you. And I want to encourage you, go for it. Get after it. Get after him. Get on your face again and begin to pull on him. Begin to cry out to him and say, Lord, I want to be lined up with you and your will so that my life can be a praise unto the glory of your grace. It'll happen. It will happen just like that. Amen. Amen. So listen, the power of the open heaven, we're going to share more of this with you, but I want you to uh, just give yourself totally to the Holy Spirit and let him uh, orchestrate your life and take your life in the direction that he wants it to go. When your flesh says, don't do it, don't do it, you got to override that and go with the leading of the Spirit of God because he wants you to experience the power of of the open heaven. This is Apostle Craig Banks. We're out of time. Thank you for yours. We'll see you next time for more of the heart of the ideal servant. Blessings to you.